we thank you for your power this morning. We thank you, God, for the word that's going to go forth, God, from our speakers, oh Lord. We thank you, God, that you're ministering to them even now. That the weight of your glory would sit on them even now, God. That you would anoint their mouths, God, to speak what thus saith the Lord, God. We come right now on their behalf, oh God. That you would calm their nerves. That you would calm their fears, God. That you would calm any anxiety, God. That you would calm any timidity, God. Anything that would try to hinder or lock their tongues, God. We pray that you would loose their tongues even now, oh God. That even as they go up in prayer, even as they go up in worship, even as they go up in praise, God, that you would break every bondage off of their mind. Break every bondage off of their mouths, God. Let them come up, God, with confidence, with boldness, oh God. That they will come with holy boldness. That they will come with courage, oh God. That they are doing the will of the Lord, God. Consecrate them even now, God, as holy vessels unto you, O oh Lord. That this will be a time for release. This will be a time for release. This will be a time for release, God. That every gift that's been locked up, God, even with everyone here, God, that every gift would be stirred. That every gift, God, would be open. That every gift, God, would get provoked to be used, oh God. That we won't sit on our gifts, oh God, but we'll teach when you say to teach. That we'll preach when you say to preach, oh God. That we'll evangelize where you say to evangelize. That we'll prophesy, God. That we'll do what you've called us to do, God. Stir up every gift. Unlock every gift, oh God. Every hidden talent, every hidden skill, every hidden anointing, oh God. Expose it this morning. Things that people didn't even know they had the capability to do. Powers that you've given them that they didn't even know that they had, oh God. Reveal this morning. Expose this morning. Use this morning, oh God. Let this be a first fruits for this house of the people that will be launched, of the people that will be released, that the mantles that will be given, that the mantles that will be confirmed, oh God, draw people to the outpour, God, to get their assignment. And let us be anointed enough, God, to lay hands and send them back out to where they belong, oh God. We pray that this will be a launch pad. We pray that this will be a training center, that this will be an equipping center, God, that we're not trying to hoard your people. We're not just trying to keep them to ourselves, oh God, but we want to release them to what they've been called to do. Stir up every gift. We pray, God, that you will move powerfully, even with our menstrual, that you'll move powerfully, God, even as we pray, that you'll move powerfully, God, even with our speakers, oh God, that you'll move powerfully, even in the lives of the visitors, oh God, that just from them being in the house, God, that they would carry a residue of favor when they leave, God. We pray even for this altar, God, that you would consecrate it for your glory, oh God, that people will come down and lay aside every weight, that they will come and they will lay their burdens down, God. That they will come and they will confess their sins, oh God. That they will come and they will be empowered, God. That they will get impartation, God. That they will get inspired, God. That they will get motivated, God. That they will get delivered, oh God. That they will receive a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, God. That the prophetic God would be on this altar. That salvation, oh God, would be on this altar, oh God. That every lost soul will find their way home. Draw them even now. Draw them even now. Bring them in off the street. Help them to see a glory even over the building, oh God. As your angel sets over the outpour, God, help us to be a living portal from glory to glory. Use us as a portal this morning. Use us as a portal this morning, oh God. We thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love, oh God. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your tender mercy. Not just mercy, oh God, but tender mercy. We thank you for your kindness. But not even just kindness, God, your loving kindness, oh God. We thank you for your favor, oh God. We thank you not just for any favor, God, but unmerited favor, oh God. We thank you for life, not just any life, but life more abundantly. We thank you for everybody in this service. We commit this service to you, Lord. Do with it as you see fit. 
bless our pastor even as he comes to take us higher into prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, God. We bless your name. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. This is a time of celebration. We come to celebrate the Lord, amen, for the things that he has done, for the things that he's done, for the greatness that he's shown, for the power of his might, for his greatness, for his favor, for his mercy. Come on and celebrate him. Today, come on and lift your hands and shout unto the God with the voice of triumph. Come on and open up your mouth and begin to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. We celebrate you, God. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We celebrate you, Jesus. We give you the praise, oh God. We enter your gates with thanksgiving, oh God. We come into your
Gary. So you're wondering why you seem to be going around the same battle. You're wondering why you seem to take comfort this one enemy. Why you seem to keep facing this one situation over and over again. But if you would change your tactic from prayer to praise. If you would change your tactic from worship to praise. If you would change your strategy and watch God get the victory in your life. Some of you need to go from a praise of praying to a praise of praising. Yes, oh God. And your victory is depending on your praise. What does praise look like? It means you clap your hands. It means you shout unto God. It means you jump if you can do it. It means you dance if you can. It means whatever you have to do to show God how good he's been, that's what you have to do. With the waving of your hands, with the opening of your mouth, with the saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Whatever you have to do, praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, with the fruit of your lips. With the fruit of your lips. With the fruit of your lips. This isn't the time to be timid. This isn't the time to be insecure. This isn't the time to be unsure. The song said, God, this is our confidence. That if you did it before, you'll do it again. The God, this is our confidence. That great is your faithfulness. Our confidence is that your promises still stand. Our confidence is that you're still a God that watches over your word. And you rush to perform it. Our confidence is that if you said it, you'll do it. Our confidence is that you're not a man that you should lie. Nor are you the son of man that you should repent. You won't change your mind. Your confidence is that in you our promises is yes and amen. Our confidence is in this, that the God who created this shall surely perform it. He shall surely perform it. He shall surely perform it. This isn't the time to be worried about what your neighbor doing. This isn't the time to worry about how you look. This isn't the time to even worry about how you feel. But bless him with the sacrifice of praise. With the sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice your pride. Sacrifice your comfortability. Sacrifice your comfort. Sacrifice your praise. Give God a praise even if you don't feel it. Give God a praise even if you don't understand. Give God a praise even if it doesn't make sense.
you, I'll pay you back. Yes, if you will sow a seed of prayer, I promise you will get our heart. But if you will praise him on prayer, I promise you the Lord will repay. God said, I'll be owing no man. I'll be beholden to no man. I'll be a debtor to no man. But I promise you. I promise. I promise. I promise. That if you will pray him now for what you had for him yet to do, that he will repay you. Come through 
pour out of ourselves, oh God. We make ourselves a drink offering unto you, oh God. We pour out our lives, oh God. We pour out our hearts, oh God. We pour out our souls, oh God. Hallelujah, we bless you. Our souls will bless you, God. Our souls will magnify you, God. Our souls will honor you, God. Our souls will give you the praise, God. Our souls will worship you, God. Our souls will reverence you, God. Our souls bless you, Lord. Our souls magnify you. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And everything that is on the inside of me. Everything that is contained on the inside of me. Everything that is within me. Withholding nothing, oh God. Withholding nothing, oh God. Keeping nothing for myself. Keeping nothing, oh God. Keeping nothing for myself. Keeping nothing back, oh God. But we give you all of us today. We give it all to you, Jesus. Everything that we have, God. All of our hopes, all of our
this is a very special day at the Alcor. Yes, yes. We are so excited. This is, we get to hear um, two of the daughters of this house yes. who have been faithful from before day one. Before we opened the door, they never just stood it in. They were always on point, always exactly where they were supposed to be, always doing what they were supposed to be doing. And if any little thing came up, they were careful to make sure that we understood where they were going to. And so it is with a glad heart that Pastor Christy and myself are waiting to partake of the word of the Lord from Minister Shakira yeah. and Minister Alani yeah. today. Y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise for them. We are in for a treat. I am so proud um, as a pastor, as a father, of just the growth that I've seen in their lives in these short months. Um, I am grateful um, that they would trust the God in Pastor Christy and myself and that they would align themselves to the out with the outpour and and, and, and and trust us with the shepherding of their souls. And I am so excited not just about today, but about where I see God taking them. And anytime we get to push people into purpose and push people into their destiny and push people into their calling and encourage them in the work of the Lord for their life, we count it an honor and a privilege. So we are excited. Cannot wait. That being said, has everybody had a chance to give? Amen. Amen. Mr. Adrian, will you come bless the offering? Amen. to give, but we know that we're really just giving back to you what you gave us for. It's not ours in the first place, so if we give it cheerfully, we honor you with our giving. And we just want to say that we love you, please bless all that had to give, all that didn't have to give, bless their hearts for they, in their heart they wish they had to give, Lord, we just ask that you cover these blessings, multiply them, fulfill every need. Life. And we honor you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I don't want to take up too much time. I feel like I've already taken up too much, but we have to obey the Lord. Um, I want to bring up um, a daughter of this house, uh, one of the sweetest people you will ever meet, um, who just loves the Lord. Who just loves the Lord, wants to love people stays out of drama, someone just peaceable, a great daughter, and we are proud to call her ours. Put your hands together for Minister Shakira. And 
I'm reminded of a service. It was one of our very first services, and Pastor Christy had gave me the mic. And I'm like, whoa. And the Lord spoke to me instantly. It was like, this is a very prophetic moment for you. And I was like, wow, Lord. And I was just doing announcements. And I still do announcements now. But in that moment, it was like I maybe third or fourth service, and she gave me uh, the mic. And even as he was passing me the mic, I, you know, I really just felt God. All right, so let me open up my notes, and we will get started, okay? So the title of my sermon is Waiting to be King. Yes. Alrighty. So we are going to go to 1 Samuel 16. Um, we are definitely going to be in the Word of God today. But we're all, you don't have to flip, you know, to different books or anything. <laughs> All right, so we are in 1 Samuel 16 and 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Yeah. We're going to go down to verse 10. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? They are still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him bought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. All right. So once again, the title of my sermon is called Waiting to be King. How many of us, first off, like waiting? No hands. Okay, so we're quiet. All right. But how many of us had to wait before? Everybody, right? So whether it's a job, whether it's marriage, whether you're waiting to get that acceptance letter from school, all of us will wait for something. And even as believers, being in the will of God does not exclude us from waiting. Right. We don't get an easy pass. We don't get to cut the line. Because we're believers, because we're Christians, um, from waiting. All of us have to do it. It can actually mean we are in the will of God right. when we wait. Yeah. All right? So my job here today is to encourage you in the wait as we take a life, as we take a look through the life of David as he was waiting to be king of Israel. Amen. Okay? So I first want to start off with defining wait. I think we all know what that word means, but I really want to say this definition because I think it's very powerful. Um, so wait is defined as stay where one is or delay action until a particular time or until something else happens. All right. So my first point is, as we look, already looked at these scriptures. Oh, matter of fact, let's, um, I'm sorry. We're going to go to 1 Samuel 17 now. We're going to go to 1 Samuel 17. Just flip the page. We're going to go down to 17. Now Jesse said to his son David, Take this ephah of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Take along these ten cheeses to the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are and bring back some assurance from them. They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Ella, fighting against the Philistines. Now we're going to go to verse 28. When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. All right? So my first point is, as you're waiting on God's promise to be fulfilled, this is, a, this is a tough one. You may get overlooked. Okay? Help us. 
that that is just the reality of the thing. So when we go back to 1 Samuel 16, we see that Samuel comes in. And Samuel's not just anybody. That's some little background information. Samuel is not just anybody. He is a prophet and he is a judge. So people take him very serious. Yeah, yeah. So even as he was coming into their land, they were like, "What? basically, what are you doing here? And, and do you come in peace? That's how scared they were of him. Right. Yes, but God gave him instruction to basically find the, the next king of Israel and um, to go to Jesse's house. Now, as we see in the scriptures, Jesse has uh, eight sons. Seven of them were originally presented to Samuel, but there was one left out. And that one was David. He was the youngest of his brothers, and he was tending the sheep. So, don't close on me, I All right. So imagine David, right? You get this message from Samuel, possibly, not even possibly, probably one of the most popular people in the land that says you are going to be the next king of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta go back to tending the sheep. Right. Not only that, but your father now sends you as an errand boy to go check on your brothers who are, who are at war for, with Saul, who is the king of Israel. So imagine how David felt. He probably felt like, man, you know, did you just hear Saul say I was going to be the next king? You know, why I got to go back to tend to sheep? Or can't you send somebody else, you know, to run these errands for you? But David didn't. So what does this mean for us? Okay. It means that we are not exempt from it. You know, there could be something that the Lord has shown you from for your life. The Lord could have said, you know, you're going to be the next uh, intercessor, you know, next big intercessor. And every time you get a chance to pray or every time there's an opportunity to pray at church, they skip over you. Right. Mm -hmm. Or God could have shown you in a dream, oh, you're going to, you know, lead thousands to Christ through worship and song. But when an opportunity is presented to be a part of the praise team, nobody even looks for you. Nobody even checks for you. They might even know that you sing. Um, so even with David, we are not exempt from being overlooked right. um, just because God has spoken something over our lives. So even with David, he still had to wait, even though he knew he was called. Okay? And I have a little joke in here that I, I do want to say. You, you might even know that, you know, God could have told you, oh, um, yeah, you're definitely going to get married. You're going to birth the godly children. But uh, every man that you find attractive keeps calling you sis. Has anybody been there before? Or, or they don't even see you. Okay? All right, but how would you act when you're being overlooked? Right. Okay, so are you going to be that person that's stopping around, huffing and puffing? Are you going to be the one that's causing discord in your church because no one's paying attention to you? Are you going to be the one... Or that's praying, like, Lord, I know that you've shown me this, but I'm going to continue to work and be faithful. Okay? Yes. All right, let's go now to, we're still in 1 Samuel 17. We're jumping now to verse 32. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be one, like one of them. Because he has defied the armies of the living God. Right. The Lord who has rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to him, go, and the Lord be with you. Yes. So my second point is, there are valuable lessons to learn while you're waiting. In this text, we see that Saul sent for David in the previous scriptures before this. Um, David did go to the camp, and he pretty much was asking people, you know, what's going on? Who's this man? 
And uh, you see that his brother basically was like, you know, get out of here. But he kept talking to other people, like, you know, let's, let's take him down, all this other stuff. Uh, so David knew, sorry, but I lost my, wait. So once David, once Saul sins for David, David knew that he had been fighting, he had been fighting lions and bears, right, during this time of waiting, even as he was waiting to be king and before then. Mm. So David had confidence that Goliath would be killed. David is sent off to the camp and in the end kills Goliath. Yes, yes. This is so important. We have heard the story of David and Goliath in Sunday school. Mm-hmm. Well, we possibly didn't really even understand what was going on. But that is so important to know that David killed Goliath. Right. Mm. So David knew that he was anointed to be king, yet he knew his primary responsibility at the time, at the time. was tending the sheep. Right. His role did not change overnight. Mm-hmm. It's the same for us. Yes. Do we abandon all responsibilities? Like before, do we huff and puff, so discord, um, while we're waiting on God's promise to be fulfilled? Right. Help us. David going back to tend the sheep was practice. Right. Because we see in the text, he, he was able to go to Saul with confidence that, man, I've been doing this. I've been killing lions. I've been killing bears. I've never killed a lion before. I've never killed a bear before. Mm-hmm. But David has done this. And David knew, I've been killing lions, I've been killing bears. Surely, Surely. I can kill this so yes. far. Yeah. So once again, David going back to tend the sheep was practice. Him killing Goliath was the game. Mm. Do not forfeit any season of your life and the lessons you may learn there. Once again, don't forfeit any season of your life and the lessons you may learn there. David was able to kill the Philistine while he was waiting to be king because he had the practice of killing the lions and the bears. Practice prepares you for the game. Okay? All right, we're going now to 1 Samuel 18. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. And now we're going to go to chapter 19, verse 1. Saul said to his son Jonathan and all the attendants to kill David. But but Jonathan had taken a great liking to David and warned him, My father Saul is looking for a chance to kill you. Be on your guard tomorrow morning. Go into hiding and stay there. I will go out and stand with my father in the field where you are. I'll speak to him about you, and I will tell you what I found out. What I find out. Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father, and said to him, Let not the king do wrong to his servant David. He has not wronged you, and what has he done has and what he has done has benefited you greatly. He took his life in his hands when he killed the Philistine. The Lord won a great victory for all Israel, and you saw it and were glad. Why then will you do wrong to an innocent man like David by killing him for no reason? So I'll listen to Jonathan and took this oath. As surely as the Lord lives, David will not be put to death. Okay? So my final point is, while you are waiting, do not overlook any connection that God has sent. It's very easy for us to know. God God told me this. What am I going to do with so-and-so? Let's say if God told you you were going to be king. What am I going to do with so so They can't help me in my journey. Right. Now, let's, let me get you some background information about who Jonathan was. Jonathan was prince of Israel. Right. He was the son of Saul. Yeah. So if anybody was next to be king, yeah. technically it was Jonathan, right. right? So although he was technically next up to be king, he took a liking to David. And he possibly knew that David was next to be king, mm-hmm. right? Could any one of us have handled that? 
but let's make it practical for us. Let's say your father owned a church, right? And you've been with your father for all your life. Your father has been training you, grooming you to be the next in line for, you know, to be pastor of this church. And then the Lord says, someone else say, and the Lord's like, no, he's going to be the next pastor. You, as a son or a daughter, be like, well, no, uh-uh, I'm next. I've been trained. I've been prepared for this. All right? Would you have been okay with someone taking a spot that was rightfully yours? It just goes to show the bond between Jonathan and David. It even says that Jonathan took off his robe, gave him his sword, his bow, his tunic. And these aren't just normal garments. These are royal garments because he was prince of Israel, right? So, yet Jonathan did not harbor any jealousy or ill feelings towards David. He befriended him and even saved him from death. I don't know many people, even friends, that will literally save you right. from that. People always talk about it like, man, you know, I'll die for you, yada, 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 right? But there was literally an opportunity for Saul to kill David. And so, once again, Saul is not just anybody. He is king of Israel. So he had the opportunity to kill him. All right? So look at those around you, especially while you're waiting. In what ways have you been blessed due to their friendship or connection? So for me, I'll share a little bit of my testimony. I'm single, I'm 28 years old, and God has sent me incredible people in my life from my family to my friends to my church family. And I know that God has promised me children, and I know those children have to come through marriage, of course. And even as I'm waiting for those promises to be fulfilled, it's not like I'm lacking in other areas of my life, right? There are still people who are sent to encourage me, love on me, rebuke you, because, you know, your friends have to tell you the truth. And, um, you know, don't take those friendships for granted, especially while you're waiting for another promise to be fulfilled to you. Let's say, you know, God has sent you to start a business. You might meet a lawyer, and you're like, I don't have no connection with this person, but that lawyer might be the one that go, no, I'm going to trademark your business. I'm going to make sure that there aren't other businesses out there. Just don't take anyone for granted. Okay? So I'm wrapping up. I encourage you in this, like David, we are not exempt from God's waiting period. Okay? Yet we can use that time to build our character, prepare for the next season to come, and appreciate what we have around us. Amen. Amen.
to, to help edit, I believe, the book. And she didn't know um, the book that she was writing uh, was about basically uh, motherhood and the, and the troubles of, of birthing something, you know. She didn't know that I had personal issues in that area when she sent me the book because we didn't know each other like that. So I wouldn't tell her, you know, childbirth um, has been a struggle for me. And so she didn't know that as I was editing her book, the Lord um, had her send it, not so that I could just edit it, but so that I could be edified through her book. And through that, there was a, a friendship. And what I love about her is that we can be friends. And she sold her such honor. She doesn't let the friendship ruin the divine connection of what we're supposed to be in each other's life. And so I know a lot about her story, and I know that this moment is big for her. Um, she's been speaking, she's been talking, she's been praying, she told her hands. But sometimes the enemy can be so petrified of your potential that he tries to block you from actually taking hold of the mantle. And so as I pass this mic to her, it's symbolic that the enemy can't hold you back anymore. Amen. If this is your time, come do what you were born to do. And um, 
This, this river was a strong line of defense. So it was a very strong line of defense. Um, and so, and I'm going to give you my first point from Joshua 3 and 1. And it says, Joshua rose early in the morning. They removed from Shilly and the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel. So he rose early in the morning, number one. So sometimes, you know, we get we get to a place where we don't want to wake up, we don't want to pray, you know, we don't want to do what we need to do. We need to seek the Lord early in the morning. One of the scriptures that um, I pulled out from Proverbs 20 and 13 is love not sleep, lest they lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Right. So we have to come to a place like Joshua. He rose early in the morning and you know he had to do what he had to do for the people as a leader. Right. And also we know that Jesus rose early in the morning. Yes, he, he rose early in the morning to get to a place where he can pray. And um, without that particular place, that was the first thing that Joshua did, was he rose early in the morning right. and um, lodged there for three days before they passed over. Um, so um, so one, of the, one of the little sub points is they're staring and looking at a promised place that was promised by the people before them. There were so many of them that were killed off before in the time of Moses because they didn't posture themselves to get to the promised land. Right. They stayed in the wilderness for four decades because their posture of their heart wasn't correct. And sometimes God will keep us in a place of wilderness until you can get yourself lined up, right. until you can get your mind right. It wasn't about they didn't know where they were going. This could have took y'all a week and a half to get here, right. but it's going to take you 40 years because your mindset needs to change. You need to come up where God is calling you to come up, right. and you need to follow the instruction of your leader because you can have a prophetic word. You're going to get to this place, but if you don't follow your leader's instruction, then you're going to meander in this place for decades, and you can. And you will bring that upon yourself. So sometimes you think that you're going to leave this place. You're going to leave a prophetic you can't sometimes leave with your prophetic word. No, you have to stay, and you're going to have to be obedient unless you die. And that's what happened. Right, so right, right, this right. place that these people, it was very prophetic for them, very profound. And I'm pretty sure if I was one of the children of Israel during that time, I would be thinking to myself, like, whoa, all the people that had to die. I'm sitting here or camped out. I can see the promise. Yet I still have to stand here and look because the Lord is going to prepare us to get over to this place. Right. So um, the children of Israel, they faced their own helplessness to accomplish a mission that was set out before them. So when I thought about being helpless, you know, like, what's helpless? You know, what's the fact? So um, they're unable to defend or act without help. Mm -hmm. They're incapable. They're impotent. They're disabled, they're powerless, unable, abandoned, unprotected, weak, and vulnerable. So those are all synonyms to helplessness. So these people needed a miracle. They needed to depend solely on the grace and the instruction and the strategy of their leader who was given the word from the Lord that this is where you're going. You're going to this promised place you're going to this place, but I need you to prepare, posture your heart, posture your mind, to cross over to the Jordan. Because imagine, if you just there, you can get a promise and you can go and forfeit it and be on the other side of the Jordan, just like that. You'll get there and you won't even be able to enjoy the fruit of the promise. You won't be able to enjoy the wonder of the wonder. You know, you won't be able to feel it. So um, my first point, like I said, was that they were faced with their own helplessness. So they know that they needed they needed God to deliver them um, to the promised place. Um, so let's see here. So the second point was that they lodged before they crossed over. So in Joshua 111, Joshua tells the people to pass through the host and command the people saying, prepare you food, for within three days, you should pass over this Jordan. 
to go in to possess the land which the Lord God, which the Lord your God gave you to possess. So before that, we all know chapter two, I believe Pastor, Pastor Sean spoke about Rahab and the spies that were going in to spy out the land. And the least likely person that you expect to help you out, like Shakira was just saying, the least likely person that he gives you in position to move over to promise will be the person, and it'll be somebody you least likely to expect. And right. of, of all people, this was somebody who wasn't an honorable person, yet she became a part of the covenant because she said, hey, I'm gonna do this for you. Please don't take us out. We know y'all, y'all it. You know, don't take us out. Let's just let, let us, can we be great with you? Right. So, you know, they <laughs> have, just saying, like sometimes it will be an unexpected person that will aid you in spying out your land. He will send anybody. He will send anybody. So prepare yourselves for those unexpected people, just like Shakira was saying, the lawyer, you don't know why, but this person is in position and it's just, just to push you forward. Yes. So, um, you know, sometimes we talk about the promised place. Um, we have to spy out the land and not just spy it out, but give you strategy on how to maintain it once you get it. Right. So um, we don't want to just go and see a place and be like, cool, okay, you know, because God can prophesy to you or you need a prophetic word. You're going to get a house. You're going to da 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 da. But you ain't got no job. So you think, you know, you got an 850 credit score, though. So you can go and be like, okay, you pre approved. Where are your money? And you don't have it. <laughs> so you have to get strategy on how to get that. You right. know? So sometimes you have to wait on it and ensure that you're prepared to keep the thing that God has told you that, that's yours. Right, right. Okay? Um, so let's see my second point. And it says, they commanded the people, saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Oh, this is heavy. Because we know the Ark of the Covenant was representative to the glory of the Lord. Right. So they're telling the people, when you see the glory of the Lord, when you see this, you shall get from out where you are and you shall follow after the glory of God. You need to follow after the power of God. Right. You need to follow forward because this is the direction that it's going to lead you. So it don't matter right now. Just when you see the ark, we know it's holy. Mm -hmm. We know the commandments are contained in there. Yeah. So everything that you need to get forward, just come. Just get your stuff and follow after follow the glory of the Lord yes, to get you yes, to your next place. So one of my other sub points was... Joshua didn't send the army first. He sent the priests first. Right. Who carried the ark, which was, the, of course, the visible representation of God's presence. So this was just an illustration. We will pursue a situation without seeking first the glory of the Lord, without seeking the counsel of God, mm -hmm. without seeking where the presence of God is going to take us, right. without even considering that this is the this is the tangible manifestation of glory, and we just gonna go and do what we want to do and be disobedient, you know, and then we end up we can look at the promise, but we still we we still need time to get we can't cross, you right. know. So, um, and then we also try to use logic. He didn't use them. There was no logic here. When you see the ark, get up, get your stuff, and come on. Right. You know, right. some people like, well, I got. It. You know, I'm baking uh, cinnamon rolls. I can't go right now. My, you know, whatever the situation is, we come up with logic and try to reason when God is just saying, come after me, come after me, and I have you. There's provision, there's protection, there's direction, there's strategy. Everything that you need is in this ark. Just follow after me. My presence in here, because in my presence is fullness of joy. And at my right hand, there are treasures forevermore. Come after me. Pursue me. And I will promise you that I'm going to bring you to this promised place. But you have to be postured. Posture after the things of God. Get your heart together. Get your mind together. So that you can move forward and get to that place that he's promised to you. So, um, and also... Because Joshua didn't send his boys first, it says here that this wasn't a technical thing for Joshua. This wasn't a technical thing for him. It was like, yeah, we can get over there, but this was more of a spiritual thing for him. Right. So he made sure that as a leader, 
But I love this part. As a leader, he prepared his people also. So he was even getting the people prepared mentally and in their heart, you know, sanctify yourself. Get yourself prepared to cross over to this place. And I love that. So if you are a leader in here, I love, I love, I love that Joshua was preparing. And you don't have to be a leader up here, per, per se. You can be a leader at your job at your kids' school, in your classroom. You can be a leader wherever you are, wherever God has appointed you to lead at your job, wherever, at the gas station. But you have to know who you are. You have to know that you are a leader before you can, and it doesn't, you don't have to be preachy. You can just lead because that's what that's what God has given you to do. He's given you that authority in that area to do that. So um, you're just making sure that you're not the only one prepared that good leaders birth out better leaders. Right. They yeah, want right. other people to be prepared also, not just them. So I love that about Joshua. Um, and so my next point was um, that there should be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. Um, and that was in verse 4. Um, so 2,000 cubits equaled 1,000 yards. I'll look that up. Um, and there were a couple reasons why there had to be space between the people and the ark. Mm -hmm. okay. So we know that people were slain by touching the ark, mm -hmm. you know, because they were out of order. There's order to this thing. Right. So you don't think that you're going to have a high mind mm -hmm. and you're going to get up there where the presence and the glory of God is supposed to be leading you and you're going to get close. No, you're going to get dead because we've been seen it <laughs> before and, you know, us will die because he, you can't just, you know, if it's going to fall, you know, the oxen doing all this and you're trying to stay, but I don't have time. I don't have, I don't have time. Right. So, um, so one of the reasons that there had to be space in between the people and the ark was because it was holy and it needs to be respected and revered as it was a visible res representation to the people. Right. And also because everyone behind it was able to follow it with a clear view. Right. So if you can just stand behind the lead, if you can just stand behind and trust and the lead is a sure thing. It's the literal presence, tangible glory of God. Right. And if you, it don't matter if you're a thousand feet or if you're two thousand feet behind. We gonna take, you gonna take the lead. Right. So it was just awesome that they were able to stand behind it, and they got direction on where they needed to go. Right. And so they needed to be, they were being positioned to follow after the presence of God and to pursue Him to ensure that they arrived at the promised place. So I loved that part. Um, and so let's see in five, um, Joshua said to sanctify yourselves. Of course, we know um, we've had some awesome teachings on consecration, sanctification, fasting here at the outpour. And um, to sanctify means to set apart to a sacred purpose or to a religious use, to consecrate, and to free from sin or purify, to make holy, to set apart as sacred. And it's, I'll put here, you know, just a parenthetical thought. How many times do we enter into a spiritual battle with a carnal mindset? Right, right. You know, we enter battle with carnal mindsets believing that we can feel or we will conquer or set apart, set us apart, I'm sorry. We enter into with carnal mindsets and we think that because we feel a certain way that this is gonna push the envelope or this is gonna move God. Right. But we know that in 2 Corinthians that the, you know, this is this is not a flesh and blood, you right. know, this is not what we doing here. Um, so <coughs> the weapons of our warfare are carnal. So we, we have to put on the mindset of Christ and be thinkers outside of our flesh and what we feel. And when you sanctify yourself, you are making yourself holy and acceptable. You're making yourself available for God to use you. And, you know, again, this is a posture because sometimes we can say something and we can confess it, but we don't believe it in our hearts right. 
And I always think of when I think of agreement with heart and mind, I think of uh, scripture Romans 10 and 9, you know, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that, you know, God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And just think about how many people will say something, but your heart is far from it. Right. You know, and that's with anything. You can tell somebody I love you. You can tell somebody, you know, thank you and, you know, like whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, you can see the agreement here. So um, I love that part also. Um, that we need to basically sanctify ourselves and prepare us to this posture place, um, this prepared place. Um, and one of my last points was that it says um, in 5, Joshua 3 and 5, it says, tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Tomorrow. So let's see what we got here. We got Joshua rising early in the morning. We got the children of Israel looking at the promise, lodging for three days with all their cattle, all their food. They, you know, they eating good, getting ready to go into the promised land. You know, they, they Jews, right? <laughs> and so um, <laughs> we got the covenant of the Lord that's given them the direction and the presence and the tangible glory of God. And they tell them to a space shall be between you. And now we have, you know, Joshua saying, Tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. Tomorrow is a day we don't know. Tomorrow is a day that is up to how you posture yourself. And sometimes tomorrow is a day that is unanticipated. Sometimes you might wake up and some stuff might be, you know, who knows? Toilet overflowing. You got all types of stuff going on. However, it said before in verse four. Um, it says, for you have not passed this way before. Right. So tomorrow is an unknown day. Right. And the Lord, he said, the Lord wants to do wonders. He wants to do wonders among you. So, and that sanctification is required for that. So these are just little tools that we need to get to the promise to cross over. Amen. So it's, I just put here that positioning yourselves and the posture of sanctification allows the wonders to be wonderful to you. Right. Because sometimes you may get to a place, and this is a promised place. This is the place that you pray for. You cry and it's not, you're not crying all that. And then you get there and you you're not ready. You're not prepared. You know, if the Lord gave you everything that you wanted, you know, like, okay, for example, you've been waiting on that dream job, you've been waiting on that career change, you know, whatever it is that you're waiting for, and you get it, and you out, you haven't prepared yourself, you haven't spoken to God, you haven't set yourself apart, you haven't, you know, made yourself, you know, the Bible says, be holy, for I am holy. Right. So you haven't put yourself in position to receive the fullness of this blessing, sometimes miracle that he's getting prepared right. to give right. to you. Right. And if you're not postured to receive it, you won't really receive it. You may touch it. Right. It may be tangible to you, but yeah. did you receive, can you receive it yes. in its fullness, you know? Right. So, um, you may miss the wonderful, the wonderment of it all. You may just, oh wow, thank you, God. You know, and we we shouts around here, so we you know we get it in. So we don't want to miss the wonderment of right. the you know right. of the promised place and the place that we were postured in. So I just <laughs> put here, not being in the correct heart and mind posture can sometimes lead to you missing God. Right. And so everyone around you, it may be something for you and your family and friends are celebrating more than you are. Because you you're not in that place, you're like you know your your posture is off, and you thinking about other stuff. I don't know what's on Netflix. I don't know what you're doing, but um, so you have to raise your also raise your level of expectation, and you know raise it to be above your norm. Right. And so, um, give me one second. I have one more point. Um, in verse seven, just jump down to seven. I just put here. It says here, and the Lord said unto Joshua, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. So, and in eight it says, and thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, when you are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, you shall stand in Jordan. But at seven, God encouraged Joshua. Right. Yeah. Right. How amazing is it to be encouraged by God? You know, it's an amazing feeling.
to know that you're doing what you're doing. He's giving us instructions. Rise up early. Lodge here for three days. Sanctify yourself. Follow the ark. He's giving us all these instructions on how we can prepare ourselves for the promise. And then in the midst of that, he comes along. You know, the Lord of hosts. King of kings. Lord of lords. Come by and he gives us these encouragement. And he said, you know, to... I will magnify you in the sight of all Israel, you know, and that they will know. Like, I'm still with you as I was with Moses. And that's, that's pretty deep, you know? Like, you don't know who you are until God, you know, confirms and he says who you are. So I know that when you're getting to that place, sometimes, you know, the Bible says, be not weary in well-doing, for we shall reap if we faint not. So, during this process, as a leader, um, as a man of God, you are facing some people that are probably fearful. They're scared. Right. And you can literally see where you're going. You can literally see all these things are before you. And Joshua had such a burden on him. You know, he was like, you know, such a labor to get these people to this place. And for God to just speak to you in that moment, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And I'm going to do more. I'm going to just, I'm going to call, I'm going to magnify, I'm going to exalt you right. in the face of all Israel so that they'll know, just like Moses, you know, who was bomb.com, you know, but just like that, they will know that you're anointed to do this. And I'm going to raise you up in front of the people. Um, so my last point, I said that the last point, huh? Um, <laughs> as Joshua took steps of faith, um, God encouraged him and I want to encourage you as you take your steps of faith because we don't always know what it's going to look like we don't know what it's, like, what it's going to look like getting to the other side God will give you instructions and sometimes you be wait, you'll wait for days and he won't give you nothing until the ninth hour he won't give you in the moment before you know the day of the hour before five minutes before it begins and we have to stay in position because He's moving. It's, it's no. We don't have time anymore. Right. There's no time for us to try to get it together. Yeah. You know, if we're gonna do exactly what God told us to do, and we're gonna do it. And I know that Pastor Christy said to me something. Um, she said to me that um, I just lost it, but the Holy Spirit's gonna bring it back. But it was just about stuff that's gonna be happening so fast. You know, that it's gonna be happening so fast. You're not gonna have time. So I'm like, oh, I ain't gonna have time. Well, I need to prepare now. In my heart, I was like, oh, I don't, I'm gonna just be ready when it comes, you know. So, and I'm I'm gonna say some stuff I wasn't ready for. <laughs> I was not ready and I was not in the posture, okay? But <laughs> but God, so we'll leave that there. Um, <laughs> but I'm just saying, moving forward, you know, if you've had a little situation like me, I was definitely wrestling with God on some things, but then God had to change my heart about some things, and, and that's still posture. So when God does it, there's, there's no mistake. There's no vacillation right. moving back and forth. It's certain. Yeah. So just get ready. Um, because we're crossing over. We begin all these words from Pastor Sean and Pastor Christy about... 2020 had a vision, and you know, I think the first people I heard talk about vision, I'm like, oh, yeah, 2020, okay, yeah, okay, I love it, you know. But we do have to get ready now because the promise is before us, it's, it's here, right. yes. and we can yes. see it. The Lord has already spoken, He's not going to take back what He said. So, if He's shown you children, if He's shown you healing, if He's shown you this career, if He's given you a dream, if He's given you, you know, you see a house, He's given you all these things. You're going to lead these people, you're going to do this for these people. Get ready. And I don't mean just get ready. Get ready here, but get ready here. Get yes. ready here. Get yourselves together because it's not going to wait on you. It's not going to wait on you. And what I always said I never wanted to do, I never want to give anybody the opportunity to do what God told me to do. Yes. I'm never going to give anybody the opportunity to do what God told me to do. So that means you have to quickly obey and you have to quickly submit because 
delayed, dis delayed obedience is still disobedience. So we don't want to be in a place when you see all these prophetic words, everybody else is rejoicing because you see it come to pass and you're still waiting like, well, what happened to me? Sometimes it's you. It's not always something else. It's not always, oh, the devil, he mad. Yeah, he mad, but you, you know, get yourself together. So, you know, we don't want to be delayed and we as a house won't be, I, we not. We're not, period. Right, right, right. So we're not going to be delayed because we have great leaders. We have a Joshua here. We, we got it going on at the outpour. But I just wanted to encourage you today that we are posture. We are positioned. And we see the place that God has already told us. The instructions are simple. Rise early. Pray. Sanctify yourself. Follow after the presence of God. For tomorrow, God will do wonders among you. So just remember that the the, pro, the promised place is for posture people. Yeah.
as you consecrate for this single 31st. Amen. Uh, and one other announcement before we move on. Uh, she spoke on our behalf, so we'll coordinate, but just so you hear in my voice, proud. Um, I felt like um, a proud father uh, watching his daughters um, at the recital. Um, <laughs> I couldn't stop smiling while you were preaching. So I am uh, grateful to God that he would entrust me with the both of you. Um, Mr. Jelani, um, you've been faithful. You've been so defer deferential and honoring as our as our role and your our position in your life. Um, and we're grateful to God for you. Um, Minister Shakira, um, same. We've literally seen you both do everything from laying hands on people to sweeping the floor. Um, and it has not gone, gone unnoticed. And because of that, um, Minister Shakira, we were actually praying and talking about it, Pastor Christie and myself. And uh, we feel uh, the witness of the Holy Ghost that you won't be released as a minister in training, but as a full fledged minister. Yes. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would cause them to restore unto 
unto them sevenfold, God, in the name of Jesus. I decree that this is a time of restoration. I decree that this is a time of reward, that this is a time of recompense, that this is a time that you paid them back for the dedication, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name. That you would make them a sign and a wonder, God. Make them a sign and a wonder, God. That you are faithful to the faithful, God. Be faithful to the faithful, God. Be faithful to the faithful, oh God. Show out on their behalf, Father. I bless their ministry, God. I bless their ministry, God. I bless their ministry, God. That it be fruitful, God. That it be effective, oh God. That it be powerful, oh God. That it be revelatory, oh God. In the name of Jesus. That they will go forth in truth and in power and in might. In the name of Jesus. And under the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God. In the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name. That you would raise them up. That you would exalt them in this hour. To be a sign in the earth. To bring in many souls, God. To change many lives, God. To change destiny, God, and to bring people into purpose and into their own destiny, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus that they would be tools in your hand, that they would be instruments in your hand, and that you would use them to change the hearts of the people that they encounter in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, we lose power. In the name of Jesus, power. God, even in their mouths, oh God, that it will go forth as a flaming sword, oh God. We stir up power in them even now, in the name of Jesus, that every gift inside of them, God, would not just be eloquent in speech, oh God, but that there will be power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus, that an apostolic anointing would be upon them, oh God, to operate in signs and wonders, oh God. Power in demonstration, oh God, that their word will come alive in their mouths, your word will come alive in their mouths, even as they teach, even as they preach, oh God, even as they prophesy, even as they lay hands, oh God, that this will be just the beginning, oh God. Just the beginning in the name of Jesus. Consecrate them for your use, oh God. Consecrate them for your use, oh God. And we thank you for the vessels that they are in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. church home. I know a pretty good one called the Outdoor Christian Church. We would really love to have you. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus and the pardon of your sin, and you're not sure that if you left this place today and something happened, that heaven would be your home, I implore you to meet us at the altar. And if you're looking for the gift of the Holy Ghost, yes, the power of God to be made manifest in your life, I implore you to meet us at the altar in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
his heart, God. Restore his heart, God. In the name of Jesus, give him a heart that feels, God. Give him a heart that is sensitive to you. Give him a heart that is open, God. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would set a garrison around his life, God, and protect him and keep him in all of his ways, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would snatch him from the hand of the enemy. And we decree and we declare that the plans of the enemy will not prosper in your life. We decree and we declare that the plans of the enemy had arrayed against you will not work. But today, we decree turn around in your life in the name of Jesus. Today, we decree restoration in your life. Today, we decree purpose and destiny and the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God to hit you and you won't be comfortable doing what you did. You won't be able to go back to where you go. But change has come to your house today. You've been wanting change for a long time. You've been wanting change for a long time and you thought you were stuck in what you used to do. You didn't know how you were going to come out of it. And every time you thought you could, it seemed like circumstances in life pulled you right back into it. But I decree in Jesus' name that if you will determine in your heart that never again will you go back. You, God will make way after 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 way. I decree in the name of Jesus that if God has to move heaven and earth to show himself on your behalf, that he will do just that. God will not fail you. Yes, yes, God. He will not fail you. But I pray in the name of Jesus that you will begin to walk in purpose in a brand new way. The, per the attack has been so great because the purpose has been great. The weight has been so heavy to keep you distracted. To keep your mind preoccupied. To keep you feeling as if you didn't have any other hope, you didn't have any other help, and there was nothing else that you could do. But help is coming today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we break every power of the enemy off of his life in the name of Jesus. We break every lie of the enemy off of his life. We break every demon that has been attacking him, every spirit that has been assigned to him. We cancel your assignment now. We break your power 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 now in the name of Jesus. In the name of
gives. The Lord surely lives and his ear is inclined to his people. And so, Father God, we pray right now that you would bless her, God, that you would stir up every gift inside of her, God, that the ingenuity of her mind and the creativity of her spirit, oh God, that you would start to use her, God, in ways that she never thought imaginable. We break off the spirit of timidity. We break off the spirit of shyness. We break off the spirit that would have you be quiet when you really had exactly what the people need to hear you say. We ask, God, that you would endow her with the power of the Holy Ghost, God. That even like Mary, God, that what you're birthing, about to birth in her, God, would be coming because you are overshadowing her with the Holy Ghost, God. We speak the Holy Ghost over her even now, oh God. That she would open up her mouth, God, even with power in the name of Jesus. That the tears would not just fall from her eyes, oh God, but that you would put a cry even in her belly, oh God, that will come out of her mouth, oh God. So we lose her voice right now in the name of Jesus. We cry aloud and we swear not on her behalf, oh God. We travail with the spirit even now, God, on her behalf, oh God. We cry out for this daughter even now in the name of Jesus. And we say hallelujah for what you're going to do in her, oh God. We say hallelujah for what you're doing in her, oh God. Hallelujah for what you're doing in her, oh God. We cry out on her behalf, oh God, that the enemy will not have her mind. We will not have her sleep. We break insomnia in the name of Jesus. We break worry in the name of Jesus. We break fear in the name of Jesus. We break fear in the name of Jesus. We break fear in the name of Jesus. But that she will be a powerful woman of the Lord. She will be a powerful woman of the Lord. God is real. God is real. God is real. He's a moving. He's a living. He's a living being. A living being. And he hears our prayers. And so we take God from being this in this antiquated and fairy tale place. And he's not just a figment of our imagination. But the Lord God, he is real. We must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so, God, we ask that you would prove to her that you are real. Prove yourself to be real in her situation. Prove yourself to be real in her life, God. Surround her with people that have the spirit, that have the spirit, oh God. Not people that are just of intellect. Not people that just have good theology and good theory, oh God, but people who have an encounter with you, God. People of kindred spirit. People that she can talk to and they can get stirred in the spirit. People that she can talk to who speak in other tongues. People that she can talk to that believe in power and demonstration. People who believe in the gifts of the spirit. We break every generational curse. We break every false religion. We break every soul tie to every place and to every person in the name of Jesus. But she will be a new creature. A new creature with a new song and a new heart. God. Cover her, oh God, even as she leaves this place, God. That what she's encountered in this moment, God, will linger in her spirit. In the name of Jesus. And we come against every demonic force. That will try to block the word of the Lord. That will try to block the truth of your word. That will try to release a spirit of error, a spirit of fear. We awaken every gift inside of her. Every dream, every vision that she has. It is real. In the name of Jesus. That the things that she sees in the spirit, it is real. That her discernment, it is real. You're not crazy. You are seeing what you're seeing. You're hearing what you're hearing. You're feeling what you're fearing because it is of the spirit. God, help her to have understanding of your presence, understanding of your word, and send people to fortify her faith. To fortify her faith in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're not as prayer, you're not as prayerful as you used to be. You're not as 
dedicated to him as you used to be. You feel there's a distance, a gap between you. You know that he's there, but you feel like you've drifted away, or you feel as if you feel like he's left you. If there's anyone in like that in this building, we would love to pray with you. Please come to this altar. We implore you. Don't leave this place. If you feel any distance between you and Jesus, please meet us at this altar. We would love to pray for you. to her emotions, God, even to her heart, oh God. 
that every piece of residue, that every remnant, that every memory that was trying to keep her in bondage, oh God, you break even the memory even now, God. We claim a fresh reset in the name of Jesus, that her memory has been wiped out, God, that a new memory card is being inserted even now, God, for fresh downloads, for fresh uploads in the name of Jesus. Fresh divine data is being downloaded in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you for her fresh start, oh God. We thank you that her new year is beginning even now. Even now, oh God, that this will be a new year's evolution for her, oh God. That the woman that she was yesterday, that is not the woman that she is in this moment, oh God. For tomorrow cannot wait. We need you to change today. 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 And so we speak newness over her mind. Newness over her heart. Newness over her body. Newness over her spirit. Newness in relationships. Newness to her finances. Newness even to her career, oh God. Newness in ministry. The Lord has answered you this day. The Lord has answered you this day. The Lord has answered you this day. For God is real. He is real and he hears the cries of his people. And so God, we thank you for answering this day. We thank you for your answer, oh God. In Jesus' name. And just one thing, if I could just get every man to just lift their hands where they are. I felt strong power on every man, even you, Joe. That even as you ministered earlier today, the power of God was falling upon you. And he wants it to come through you. That it's not something that's just going to rest on you. That it's going to live in you. And even as you minister, don't get discouraged when the enemy tries to attack you vocally. He's not attacking you because of what you sing. He's attacking you for what you're about to preach. And so, Father God, we cover the gift of who he is that you endow him with your power, that you would infill him with the gift of the Holy Ghost to the fullness that it is available, the fullness to which it is available in the name of Jesus. And that that minister, not minstrel, but the minister that you're calling him to be, God, that his voice would not be silenced, that his gift would not be hindered, and that your power would permeate in who he is. I even saw you, um, sir, that you are a strong man of God. And the devil wants to surround you with a lot of carnal things yes. so that you can't hear the Lord. Yes. I even saw that you actually like things yes. to be in order. You like things to be holy. Yes. You like things to have a certain chasteness to it, a certain morality to it. And that you don't need to get comfortable in carnal things because you're a spiritual man. Yes, Lord. You're a spiritual man. You grew up in the things of God. And the Bible says that when you're trained up in the things of God, that when we are old, we won't depart from it. That the enemy will try to make us depart from it. But even in the midst of whatever circumstance, you're called to be spiritual. And that when you start operating in the spiritual, you will change the atmosphere. And I hear the Lord saying, when you change the atmosphere, the environment will have to follow suit. Atmosphere is different than environment. Environment is what is growing from the land. Atmosphere is what is in the air of the land. So once you start changing the atmosphere, that means you have to pray in the home. That means you have to pray in the car. That means you have to rise up early, like the woman of God says, as a leader, to get the word of the Lord so that the atmosphere can make the environment fall in line. Amen. But you're a spiritual man of God. And God wants to do great things for you. And the attack has been heavy, as Pastor said, because your calling is heavy. Don't downplay your call. Yeah. That spirit of, I'm just I'm just out here trying to make it. I just want normalcy. I hear you saying, I just want things to just be normal. You're not called to, to normality. You're called to extraordinary. God didn't say he came to give us life. He said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And so we speak to this man of God even now, oh God. That the extraordinary vessel that you're calling him to be, that he would accept this call to the extraordinary. That he will not be a mediocre man, that he will not be an average man, that he's not going to pray for normality, oh God, but you're going to do great things in his life. And legacy, his legacy will go forth as you have preordained for it to do, even as he changes the atmosphere, his environment will follow suit. 
Minister Adrian, I saw the power of God on you earlier in service today. And there's a new freedom. There's a new release yes. that the Lord is giving you. There's great things inside of you that the Lord is stirring up. He's yes. stirring them up actively. Yes. But you won't even be able to sleep because you're going to be like, Lord, why is my mind keep going? Why is my spirit still? He's stirring you. He's stirring you. Because it's time to pour out. Yes. He's stirring you because it's time to pour out. And the power of God is going to overtake you. You won't have an opportunity to think it off, to, to rationalize it. Logic won't have a time to set in. You won't keep hearing what's in your left ear, what's in your right ear. It's going to be a move of God. A move of God to hit your life. The stirring is happening. Even in your belly, even now. And things will be birthed yes. from the stirring that God is doing in you. Yes, Lord. And so I know I've spoken to you before the last time. Strong leadership is upon you. Yes. Strong leadership. And you know it. And you like to weigh things in the spirit to make sure that you are in order. I see that you like to make decisions. You like uh, to cut, to measure twice and cut once. That once you're going to make a decision, you want the decision to be sure, so you take your time in getting there. God appreciates that about you, and he's pushing you into a place of leadership, and it may not seem like it. I don't even know in what capacity you already operate in, but you have influence. You have influence with people. They may never say it out their mouth, but they watch you to see how you're going to handle things, to see how you're going to respond, to see how you're going to react. And you'll see in 2020, God's going to give you more confirmation that you are, in fact, that leader that you think that you are, that you know that you are. And he's going to put you in position to have the authority to lead. That's what's been missing, the authority to do it the way that you see fit to do it. And so God's going to bring you in alignment with people who understand the vision you have for yourself and how God is telling you to do a thing. And the authority will be released so that you can add that to your power. There's power and there's authority. They come in a tag team and you need both for what you're about to do. Amen. Amen. And you don't even want to leave even little Harlan out wherever he is. <laughs>
thank you for showing up on our behalf today, Father. God, protect each and every person as they're traveling back to their home or other destinations, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the words that went forth today, Lord. We pray that they aren't robbed or stolen from us, Lord, and that they're watered even throughout this week, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for every visitor, every constant face that we see, Lord. I pray that next 